Drug combinations that have the potential to have a favorable impact on patients' quality of life uh, includes, in my opinion, uh, ipilimumab and nivolumab. Now, certainly this combination has its toxicity, but hopefully with patient and family education and a healthcare team that understands the potential toxicities of this, this can be uh, mitigated, meaning we can catch side effects early and hopefully prevent them from worsening. There are, of course, always those cases where a patient may get just one dose of either a combination or even a single agent immune checkpoint inhibitor and have a very difficult side effect to manage. So it is very patient specific. So I think it's difficult to generalize and sort of talk about different combinations that can be well received or well tolerated by patients. I would also say that uh, cabozantinib and nivolumab combination uh, certainly is fairly well tolerated. Um, although in some patients, they might have a particular difficulty with either one of those agents. In, in clinical trials, sometimes looking at the quality of life or side effect profile, if the comparator is a medication that might be viewed more negatively in that way, it makes the combination uh, look a lot better. Yes, you're right, Virginia. There are a lot of new options coming out. And I think your point is important that it's really about doing everything possible to help a patient and caregiver make the best out of whatever treatment they're starting. You never know that the next treatment's going to be as equally effective or equally tolerable. So when I'm educating patients and caregivers, I really talk about early communication, which you alluded to, and doing everything possible to manage those side effects up front so that we can give them the best option and the best quality of life on whatever treatment they're giving. Now, Megan, I'm sure you probably have similar scenarios in your clinical practice. What are your thoughts? Thank you, Laura. And then I echo when it comes to discussing quality of life and the new treatment options that can impact that, it really comes to what you're alluding to as well about what point in their treatment journey they are. Are they newly diagnosed and we're trying to reduce tumor burden pretty quickly? Is the focus on quality of life going to be reduction in tumor burden because that will help with their symptoms? Or is it that they are progressing and they're on their third line therapy and we're focusing on minimizing the toxicity from the treatment? So having that ongoing conversation about quality of life at the spectrum that they're on in their treatment journey, I think helps us hone in on how to best maximize and respect their decisions on their treatment options. And continuing on that line too, Megan, is when we did treatments, as Virginia alluded to, high dose IL-2 interferon, some of the um, VEGF TKIs, we treated nonstop. We treated until we lost efficacy. And that has been a real education and transition with some of our newer therapies with individualizing dosing. So adjusting the dose um, of these drugs or drug holidays. We never used to talk about drug holidays because we were afraid we would lose the effectiveness. And now with immunotherapy and the checkpoint inhibitors, I have patients that have been off therapy for several years either because they achieved a very strong response and had side effects that needed and required a treatment interruption, or they'd completed the two-year treatment plan, and now we were monitoring their disease to reinitiate treatment at the time of disease progression. And that's been a learning curve for us in, in the oncology field, as well as a very strong and sometimes challenging conversation with patients who do not want to stop their therapy but they're trying to balance efficacy, effectiveness, and quality of life with side effects. Yeah, that's a really critical point, Laura. I know when we first started using immune checkpoint inhibitors and a patient would come in with a side effect and you would understand that they were only really telling you the tip of the iceberg, that they had been having this side effect for some time but really didn't want to fess up to it because they're very fearful about stopping their treatment. And it really does take education and uh, communication to help them understand that it's, it's in their best interest if we hold at that time to get control of a side effect 
in order that we can perhaps restart the immune checkpoint inhibitor, or as you point out, we have so many patients today who are doing well off the immune checkpoint inhibitors for years, and whether that means they have had a complete response or stable tumor regression or even stable disease that's not growing, that is still, that is still a, a win in our, in our eyes. And, and I think it takes uh, changing a patient's mindset sometimes to understand that.